Yeah, hello and welcome to our second tutorial video with SOMI1. In this tutorial video I will show you how to map um, different movement parameters of SOMI1 to your um, to Ableton Live instruments or any Ableton Live parameters. So before you start, make sure you, that you have downloaded our SOMI1 editor for Ableton Live from our website on the support section. And here is a, a simple example project. So what I am having here is, this is just for recording my voice. You can ignore that track. This is a simple instrument here from the, from the Ableton Live uh, presets. And here's a simple MIDI clip, which is just a long C. And um, yeah, here's an empty MIDI track. Here's a track where, which is just used to visualize some parameters, which you see later. Okay, so this MIDI track is uh, just created newly. So this is a plain, plain MIDI track in Ableton Live. Here I have my SOMI1 editor for live. I will add this to the MIDI track. And now we can see that the phone SOMI1 thingy here or LED is still uh, uh, um, gray. So it means we don't have an active connection to the hub yet. And uh, maybe you remember in the last tutorial videos that also it was the same that this was gray. And this was because we had some preset uh, settings here um, for the yeah, for the Sony Live editor settings, and to transmit them, the monitor has to be on auto. And if you want to establish a connection now, um, you have firstly to select the Sony One as input as an input, and for the output the same. You select Sony One, and now as soon as I will hit the monitor to input, which was not in the last uh, like which is not in the in the last preset project. Um, the SOMI1 editor will recognize the hub. So I clicked it, you see the phone SOMI1 LED goes yellow the, and all the settings were updated here according to the current settings which are the, uh, saved on the hub. And you see the two sensors are connected so both sensors still have 100% battery, uh, battery level. Um, if a sensor connection would uh, get lost uh, or, or if a sensor loses connection to the hub you will see a dash like this again. Okay, so um, these are now the very, very um, plain settings and I will start with the control change. And um, you probably know control change is uh, used to, to uh, control parameters like with a knob, similar to the knob. So firstly, here I select the sensor I want to, um, to configure. In this case, I leave it at sensor 1. Then I select the movement parameter I want to use. So I would just use uh, the tilt X parameter and all these parameters uh, below the tilt X selection are corresponding only to this tilt X movement parameter. So basically if I change to tilt Y, for example, these settings are only for tilt Y. Okay, let's go back to tilt X. You can disable it, of course, if you don't want it. You can invert it, you can scale it, which, mean, uh, which means you make it more sensitive. Uh, you can add uh, some slew limiter to smooth it, a slew, yeah, a, slew limiter, a slew limiter to move it, to change the MIDI channel. This is C controller corresponding to the tilt X, high resolution, and the solo button. And the solo button is what we use to map the different uh, 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 desired parameter to Ableton Live. So if you imagine, right now we have two sensors all of them for the control change, or all movement parameters are active for the control change. So right now, 14 parameters are sent to Ableton Live. If you want to use the MIDI learn functionality, Ableton Live, does, of course, doesn't know which one you want to map. So this is where the solo button comes in. So depending on which sensor I have selected and the movement parameter, when I'm clicking the solo button, only this control change parameter will, send, will be sent from the hub to live, nothing else. So this is only for, for doing a mapping. So when I'm soloing it now, you see on the SOMI1 up here that the LED also turned yellow, meaning it's uh, soloed, so a specific parameter is soloed. And let's say I want to map the solo, uh, the tilt X um, uh, parameter to the filter cutoff. Actually, it's already done, but um, let me just delete the old mappings <laughs> to, to show it to you be better how it's actually done. So you can see now nothing is mapped here. And I have selected the tilt X. And um, so it's important if you, for example, keep the mouse uh, or you have something selected here in the session view or in the arrangement view and you enable the MIDI learn because data is still re continuously received, you get uh, a mapping what you probably don't want. So I would recommend just click here on the right side, uh, so nothing is selected or directly on the parameter so you want to map. 
Now let's enable the MIDI learn functionality in Ableton Live. Click on the MIDI track, on the parameter I mean what you want to con uh, select and you see channel 1 controller 16 was mapped to the filter cutoff. I will leave the MIDI editor screen now and here you can also see I have also the CC controller 16 corresponds to tilt X. So I will unsolo it again, everything is sent again and I will just start the sound here. And here is the filter cut off on a very low level and I'm going up. Stand, I guess. So let's say I want to map another parameter to the filter resonance of the same sound. So let's say I want to map the tilt Y. So I'll select the tilt Y, make the settings I want. Uh, by the way, if you change any settings, you always have to click the apply button, but I will show it uh, in, a, in a second. So again, I have selected the tilt Y. You can see that the controller jumped to 17 because we, we are using control LCC controller 17 for tilt Y. And I will enable the solo again, so only tilt Y, um, or rather controller 17 is sent to Ableton Live. I will select the filter resonance, for example, open the MIDI learn again, click the filter resonance, move the sensor a bit, so data is uh, incoming, and that's it. And because right now you may um, already uh, get it that uh, we still have sold the SOMI 1 app, so still the yellow LED is here. So, so if I'm moving a sensor, of course only the resonance is changed because we're sending only the CC17 or the tilt Y. So if I unsolo it again, now you can see again both parameters are controlled here. So just as an example, here's the, the cutoff and here's the resonance. So that's it, pretty, pretty easy. Okay, let's continue with the note section here. For the note section, you actually, in comparison to, to control change, you have two different parameters, movement parameters as input, because basically you want to know when a note should be pressed or not pressed, and you want to control the pitch of the note. So for the note, uh, to select if a note is pressed or not, this is the movement gate parameter. In this case right now, it's set to activity, it's enabled, and the threshold is set to 0.5. And the threshold means every, if, the, if the incoming uh, value here of this movement parameter is above, uh, above this threshold, um, then it, it corresponds to be a note on, so the note is pressed. And if it's below the threshold, it's corresponding to the note is not pressed. So let's keep this as it is and as I said if you want to change something you always have to click apply so just if you for example want to make it very sensitive you would hit for example 0, uh, 0 0.3 and you click apply and you also see how this uh, LED turns green on the hub so but I leave it at the normal state so this is again um, 0 0.5 then the second uh, parameter is to, as I said, to, to select the pitch of the node. So again, I can choose a uh, any, any input parameter, and this time, uh, this case, I'm, I'm selecting the tilt Z, which means, means uh, which means the, the direction of the sensor, or like a compass axis. So basically, now when depending on where I'm pointing at, I'm changing the pitch of the node, and I have selected a node output range from C1 to C3. You can invert. Um, both parameters, the gate and the pitch, and here you can set the MIDI channel. So by default, uh, each sensor of SOMI 1 sends on its own MIDI channel. So sensor 1, everything from sensor 1 is on MIDI channel 1, every, everything from sensor 2 on channel 2, etc. And uh, But still, you can change this, for example, if you use SOMI 1 in combination with hardware, this is, this is required. Okay, so now as I said, Everything above the threshold uh, is a node on, and activity is just the acceleration. So I will select for MIDI input for the instrument again the SOMI 1. I select channel 1 and make it here the monitor to input. And now if I'm shaking the sensor, a node is pressed, but only very, very shortly. In this case, usually uh, this instrument is more you want to hold a note. So 
I would instead use a tilt angle for that. So because then you can hold a note as long as you want. I will select uh, the tilt X. I'm clicking on apply. And now you already heard it that it started. So if, as soon as I'm crossing the horizontal line, here the note starts. If I'm turning a bit to the right, the pitch change gets higher. Or to the left lower. Or I'm around. So you get it, and uh, yeah, this is how you how you play notes uh, with uh, sensors. How to set it up, and lastly, uh, we I uh, we have the, the pitch pen control here, which is uh, disabled by default. So I will enable it. And for pitch pen, I'm usually prefer to use acceleration because acceleration, similar to a pitch pen wheel, which has a normal position in the middle. The acceleration value is uh, for pitch bend also in the middle. If you if there's no movement, if you're going to the right, the value increases. If you go to the left, left, the value decreases. So I have enabled the pitch bend. I'm clicking apply again. The LED turns green, meaning the settings were transmitted. And let's see what happens now when I'm shaking the sensor and the note is ahead. So you hear the frequency pitch which is the pitch bend, if I'm disabled again, nothing happens anymore when I'm shaking it. Okay, so this was all the settings you can do with, uh, with a Somi One Hub. Um, again, always remember to click apply if you change something. And also very important, if you want to save all the settings, in the internal memory of the Somi One Hub. So to keep the settings after you're powering it off, you have to click save. This is very important. And all the internal settings are getting overridden. And furthermore, maybe if you, uh, some, some weird behavior is and you don't find it again why, why this is, because you made tons of different changes, um, you can reset the mappings to the factory default and same for the sensors, because the sensors always stay in the same order as soon as you've uh, saved the, the settings once and the sensors connected. So these two, for example, will always stay in this, correspond to one and two uh, fixed, or fixed in this case. Okay, this was the second tutorial, tutorial video how to map different parameters in Ableton Live uh, using the Sony One editor for live. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to use our standalone MIDI editor to use Sony One with any MIDI compatible software or hardware.